Cool. Thank you. Uh, again, yeah, my name is uh, Eric Rye. Uh, this work was conducted in conjunction with my colleague Rob Beverly uh, when we were at the Center for Measurement and Analysis of Network Data, or CMAND. Um, I've, I've since moved on to, to Maryland. Um, again, the title of our talk is IPVCU, Exploiting Leaked Identifiers in IPv6 for Street-Level Geolocation. Um, so just to give you the kind of punchline up front, um, IPVCU is a, a novel location privacy uh, attack that affects uh, millions of home routers um, that are participating on the IPv6 internet um, by exposing their exact physical location with street level precision via a particular type of um, IPv6 address. So this is, um, we thought it was surprising, and I think you'll find it surprising as well, uh, because there's been a ton of work in, in, IPv, in the IPv6 space at um, creating addresses that resist tracking and uh, uh, are ephemeral and that kind of thing. So the, the idea that we were able to achieve street level precision geolocation um, was, was surprising to us. Um, throughout the talk, I'll be referring to IPVCU both as our, our technique to do this, as well as an internet-wide measurement campaign that we conducted um, in order to, to validate um, and verify the, the efficacy of our, of our technique. Uh, and then finally, we did some, some remediation with a couple of um, device manufacturers, as well as some internet service providers. Um, so the, the high-level idea, the kind of intu intuition here, um, is, a, is a confluence of a couple of factors that allows us to, to do this kind of geolocation in the IPv6 space. Um, so uh, the, the first factor is that many um, home routers, customer premises, uh, equipment devices, CPE devices, SOHO devices, I'm going to use these things interchangeably, um, use a legacy mode of IPv6 addressing um, called EUI64 addresses that we'll talk about here in a second. Um, the key part about that is that um, in this particular type, Type of IPv6 address, the, uh, the, the, the MAC address of that interface is encoded in the lower half of it. Um, a second key uh, component for our, our attack that's required is um, that many home routers also are, are like all in one boxes um, that are, are routers, they're switches, they're, they're cable modems, and they also have Wi Fi. That's a key component for our attack, is that they're also a combination Wi Fi device. Um, so the high level kind of roadmap uh, for what we do here is first, uh, we discover a, a large number of, of MAC addresses that are on the, um, the external internet facing side of these CPE devices, uh, WAN MAC addresses, and then we predict from the WAN MAC address what the associated BSS ID or basic service set identifier, which is just the MAC address of the uh, access point on these all-in-one devices. So we take that, uh, that WAN MAC address, predict the BSS ID, um, and then look up a BS, that BSS ID that we predict um, in one of these geolocation databases that I'll talk about here in a second. And if that uh, BSS ID exists in one of these geolocation databases, um, then we've essentially ended up uh, geolocating that IPv6 address um, on, on the, the WAN interface of that CPE device. And because these things are, are home routers and they have a, a whole subnet that's attached to the LAN side, we've essentially geolocated all of those things that are inside of the LAN network on these devices as well. So that's kind of the, the high level idea and the, the roadmap here. Okay, so our attack relies on, on aggregating or collecting like two big corpuses of data, uh, the first is which, uh, of which is a, a large number of uh, MAC addresses that are associated with the, the WAN interface on these devices. Um, so essentially, uh, to, to kind of get the mental model uh, right here, uh, because often I think about things in terms of the IPv4 internet, um, where your CPE device is a, a NAT box, um, that's you know, totally different on IPv6, right? The CPE device is a routed hop. The, uh, addresses that are inside of your customer subnet, if uh, you have IPv6 at home, um, are globally routable. So that allows things uh, like you know, me, a random guy in the internet, to send things uh, like pings and trace routes to addresses that exist within your house. Um, and so we went ahead and did that, right? Uh, we located a bunch of uh, you know, residential uh, internet service provider networks, and then we sent a whole bunch of probes to a whole bunch of random addresses that we think are inside of customers' homes. Um, the purpose here is not that we expect to elicit some kind of response from an address that we, we randomly choose inside of the customer subnet. That's highly unlikely. Um, but all we're attempting to do here is elicit a response from the CPE device via some kind of ICMP error message. Um, we're attempting to do that because in that uh, ICMP error, we're going to, to get the, the source address of the WAN interface of that CPE router, which is what we want. Um, so 
there is a particular kind of IPv6 address called EUI64, Extended Unique Identifier 64 addressing, um, wherein the MAC address of the interface is encoded in the lower uh, 64 bits of the address. This is not the only kind of address in IPv6. Um, in fact, this particular kind of address uh, has been obsolescent for about two, two decades now, but we find that it's uh, still fairly uh, commonly deployed in practice, especially on these kind of lower cost um, devices like are, are present in CPU devices in people's homes. Um, so the EUI 64, the Extended Unique Identifier 64 address, is again encode the MAC address of the interface in the lower 64 bits of the V6 address. Um, that's called the Interface Identifier, or IID. Um, and they're encoded in a particular deterministic way, um, wherein the MAC address uh, in between the third and fourth bytes has an FFFE shoved in the middle of it, because MAC addresses are 48 bits, that makes it 64. Um, and then the seventh bit of the first byte, the so-called universal local bit, is, in, is inverted. And so um, when we, when we uh, get responses from EUI 64 addresses, it's very easy to reverse the process and obtain the MAC address from the WAN interface of these devices um, by simply reversing the process. And so um, doing this over the course of about a year, um, we found more than 60 million unique um, WAN uh, MAC addresses from, from CPE devices. Um, the other large corpus that our attack is dependent upon is a, a, a large collection of uh, BSSID geolocations. And this sounds fairly hard, but it actually in practice is the much easier uh, thing to do. Uh, there are several open source uh, BSSID, like war driving geolocation databases that you can simply download. Um, many people are familiar with the Weigel project where war drivers you know, drive around their towns and upload um, you know, packet capture or whatever to, to the website. Um, and so by using these sources of data, we were able to collect um, a, a large number of geolocated BSSIDs. So now that we have these two uh, sources of data, the question is like, are, can, we, can we link the WAN MAC addresses that we receive in IPv6 addresses, in EUI64 addresses, to the BSSIDs? Because if we can do that, then we're able to link the IP address to a geolocated BSSID and therefore that, that user's uh, home device. And so, again, our attack rel uh, relies on the fact that, that not all, but many uh, devices uh, in the CPE space are kind of all-in-one system on a chip combination devices, right? It's a cable modem, it's a, it's a switch, it's a router, it's a Wi-Fi access point, you know, it's a toaster or whatever, right? Um, and, and the key point here is that every interface on this device has, uh, you know, its own MAC address. And um, oftentimes, this is not required by any means, but it's easy to, to, to get in the headspace of like someone who's, who's um, you know, manufacturing these, these devices. The MAC addresses are allocated in, in like chunks or they're allocated in some predictable manner. Um, like this eight, you know, eight uh, address spread is all allocated to the same device. So on, on the right-hand side of the screen there, I have a, a picture where it has four MAC addresses, two for uh, the wireless interfaces and one for, for the WAN MAC address. Um, and we, in this, in this uh, picture, which is illustrative, um, the WAN MAC address is an offset of plus one or plus two from the BSSIDs. So for this particular device, and devices demonstrate all kinds of different patterns, um, the offset that we would, that we would uh, derive from this particular device would be a, a minus one or a minus two from the, the Wi-Fi MAC address to, to get, sorry, from the WAN MAC address to, to derive one of the Wi-Fi MAC addresses. And so we create uh, a, a algorithm for, for um, generating the offsets between WAN MAC addresses and BSSIDs on a per organizationally unique identifier or OUI basis. And we use those offsets, which again can be different for many different manufacturers and different OUIs, even in the same manufacturer they can be different. And we paired uh, about 12 million WAN MAC addresses with geolocated BSSIDs. Um, and so obviously the next question is like, that's cool that you can, you can, you can link them together, but you know, are your linkages actually correct? And so when we were starting out, we did like a limited form of validation where we asked our, our friends and family and, and you know, crowdsourced our, from our colleagues um, what their IP addresses were and what their you know, geolocations were. And we found that this is working pretty well. And so ultimately, and the details are in the paper, we worked with a large US residential ISP in order to get some level of validation with them. Um, they were not willing to you know, share a ton of information about their customers, they did you know, validate that we were achieving an over 80% accuracy on, on the, the geolocations that we gave them at a zip code level, which there's, you know, zip codes in the United States can be very big, very small. There's a, a bunch of sort of nuance there. 
Um, and in addition, we confirm that this vulnerability is, is, is feasible with, with several um, CPE manufacturers as well. And one of the CPE manufacturers, in fact, developed a patch to disable this type of IPv6 addressing that allows us to, to, to do this attack. And then finally, we extended our attack. attack. So everything up to this point required um, you know, the device having the EUI64 address, which is not always the case. Um, we extended this attack to kind of uh, at a more coarse uh, granularity also geolocate devices that were not using EUI64 addresses at all, they just had neighbors who were. Um, and so essentially um, we were able to do this because the, the internet uh, measurement campaign that we ran used traceroute, so we were able to link all of the devices that had a common internet service provider like last hop router together. Um, and so what we see on the screen here, all those blue dots are geolocated um, EUI64 devices um, that are attached to the same like internet service provider router. And then any device uh, that's not using EUI64 addressing that happens to also be attached to that same ISP router, we can guess with a pretty, you know, fairly high confidence because of, you know, physical media constraints and stuff that it's within the same general vicinity. So this actually, um, all the blue ones are again geolocated EUI64 devices. That kind of mustard colored one is my mother's house in Washington State, which was not using EUI64 um, addressing, but we see, you know, falls out within the, the you know, center of mass of, of the geolocated devices there. Um, so that uh, pretty much wraps up my talk. Again, we you know, introduced IPVC, which is a novel location privacy attack that uh, enables a, re a remote, unprivileged uh, adversary to geolocate with street-level pre precision devices that are using a particular type of IPv6 address. Um, in theory, this should be easy to prevent, right? Uh, just don't use EUI64 addressing the addresses that encode the MAC addresses and the IP address, and you know that will that will put a stop to this, right? But in practice, many of these devices, you know, are hard or impossible to update, and so we expect that like you know this, this attack will be practical for another several years. So thanks for listening. Um, I'm happy to take any questions now, and happy to talk offline too if that's something you'd like to do. There's thank thanks for that. Any questions? Hi, thank you very much for your talk, very interesting. Uh, I was wondering, out of the 12 million uh, Macs you had, how many were you able to validate? Because uh, I figure friends, family is probably small, but the ISP, how, which percentage? There were over a million from that particular ISP. Okay. Um, now there's lots of nuance there too. Uh, there ended, we ended up you know, giving them the, the, the IP address and the geolocation and some non-trivial sub subset, they were like, yeah, we don't know where those, those addresses were. Um, but of the ones that could tell us where they were, that kind of thing, yeah. It okay, was, and do you know if for the BSSID data set you have that links BSSIDs to uh, locations, do you have like an error, like an estimate of like errors in there or? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, no, other than uh, just the physical constraints of like capturing Wi-Fi, you know, with an alpha card or whatever. Other than that, no. I mean, so that I think puts it within, you know, 10 meters to 100 meters, maybe if you're in open field or something like that. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Matt Wright from Rochester Institute of Technology. Hi. Um, the, uh, I expect that a lot of people in the community probably know this, but I don't, so I'm asking. Um, to what extent are uh, Wi-Fi MAC addresses ge geolocated and um, in publicly available databases, and why? <laughs> uh, so there's a couple of, I mean, there's, you know, war drivers obviously want to do this for whatever reason they want to do this. There are also, um, you know, uh, in, like location APIs will allow you to geolocate yourself in the, ac in the absence of having some kind of GPS signal as well, um, as far as the motivations for like why people upload data to Weigel or whatever. It's a good question. Okay, so it's just that there's war drivers gathering the data, posting it to the public Indeed. databases, and there's Indeed. just a lot of that information. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Okay, super. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Eric, for the great work.